let's dispel some gun myths, or at least a gun myth. Uh, something I get tired of hearing on the range. I just don't shoot blah blah gun well. I can't shoot blah blah gun. I hear that so many times that I feel like I have to say something about it on a video. Um, not that this video is going to necessarily find the people that tend to say that, but let's talk about it anyway because it gets on my skin or under my skin. On my nerves and under my skin. I just can't shoot so-and-so gun well. I can shoot this brand of gun, but I can't shoot this brand of gun. Or I can shoot this type of gun well, I just can't shoot this other type of gun well. And uh, here's the deal, if you can shoot a handgun well, because you're doing it the right way, you can shoot every handgun well. Assuming that you have uh, the, the visual ability to see the sights and you have the trigger finger strength to manipulate the trigger effectively. Um, if you're shooting one brand or one type of firearm drastically better than another type, it's not because directly because the difference in trigger pull or the difference in ergonomics or so on and so forth um, how the battery of arms works it's none of that it's it's because you are masking some of your inadequacies with the fundamentals of marksmanship uh, with that specific type of firearm in other words you are making mistakes, but some firearms will lend themselves to masking those mistakes maybe better than others, depending on which mistake you're making. Look, there's only three core fundamentals. Side alignment, side picture, those two things together are called aiming, and trigger pull. That's it, that's the only thing. When it comes to handguns at normal handgun ranges, that's it. It doesn't matter how you're holding the gun, doesn't matter how you're standing, none of that matters when you're just trying to stack groups Side alignment, side picture, those two things together are called aiming and trigger pull. Slow, smooth, consistent press, breaking the trigger um, that way. Uh, I've got four three quarter inch stickers at five yards. So we're looking at something that's smaller than an inch at five yards away. And we have four uh, different weapons here. We have my Springfield Armory slash HS2000 Franken gun, which is pretty close to a race gun, match trigger, match barrel, compensated, converted from a 40 to a 9 mil, all the bells and whistles there, okay? So this, this is made for speed and accuracy. Um, this is a Gen 4 Glock 17 9 mil, okay? So the newest version of Glock's uh, duty handgun. And then we have a Gen 2 Glock 22 40 cal, which is actually the first generation that this caliber was produced um, by Glock. So it is a Gen 2 frame, but it is the first generation of Glock's 40. So this is a, an 80s, late 80s version of Glock's duty handgun and 40 cal. And then we have a really old Smith & Wesson Model 10 revolver with milled sights and everything stock except the finish I did parkerize it. Um, so four very different weapons either you know, we got three different calibers reflected here 9, 9, 40 and 38. Um, do two different generations and different calibers of the same brand of weapon same size weapon just different calibers different generations and then we have something that's drastically different than the other three and that is a double action revolver. Um, point I'm going to make, sight alignment, sight picture, trigger control, if you are actually doing those three fundamentals, you can shoot any handgun. Everything else is just preference. Maybe this is never going to be as fast as this, and it won't be. Um, could Jerry Mitchellick be fast with this? Of course he could. He'd be faster with that. He'd be faster with both of these than that. Um, this 9 is always going to be faster than this 40 because it's, it's not going to come off the target as far with recoil. So there are differences, differences that make, that make tangible um, differences in combat effectiveness if you believe that it takes accuracy and speed to win a gunfight. But I'm talking about the folks that say, I can't shoot this, but I can shoot this. Um, if you really do what you're supposed to do, if you're actually shooting well because of the fundamentals, you can shoot anything. So, four drastically different weapons, uh, cold range, haven't shot in three to four days, 
I'm just gonna put this down here and show you, prove to you, okay, that accuracy is a, is a product of the fundamentals of marksmanship, not a product of your preferences uh, in a firearm. So, first things first, the the gun that is designed for this kind of thing, okay, so this is, this is supposed to be accurate and fast. This is my XD um, HS2000 hybrid. I'm gonna shoot at the top left, three quarter inch sticker, five yards, two hands, standing, full light, six rounds. Six rounds, one hole. Moving on to the Gen 4 Glock 17 9mm, top left three quarter inch sticker, six rounds. Look at that, six rounds, one hold. Now, Gen 2 Glock 22 40 cal. Bottom left hand sticker. Six rounds, one hole. Now, over here to this archaic gun that, that surely couldn't be possibly be as good as the other, the Springfield, or I'm sorry, uh, Smith & Wesson Model 10 uh, double action revolver, and I will be shooting these six rounds double action. Bottom right hand sticker. Six rounds, one hole. So let's talk about this. All right, group number one, Springfield Armory. And you'll say, well, that's not as good as the other ones because look, it's off the sticker. It's high off the sticker because I have suppressor height sights, which raises at this distance of only five yards, raises my point of impact point of aim a little bit because the sights are sitting higher off. So it's not about it not being on the sticker. It's about the group itself. And that's six rounds and one sub one inch hole. Second gun, second group. Looks very similar to the first one, and this is a bone stock Glock 17 9 mil Gen 4. Look at that. Point of impact, point of aim is a little more uh, on top of each other because of the lower profile sights, which are stock, uh, along with the stock trigger and everything else. And then let's move down here to the Glock 40, and once again, all one group. Okay, this one looks separate, but they are connected. But Mark, it's off, so it must be that old gun. No, it's that I realized after I started shooting that the rear sight on this gun um, has drifted. Uh, see how it's moved a little bit and it's not centered in the rear? So that's why that's a little off that way. But point of the matter is the group. The group is all there, okay? And then look down here. This gun that couldn't possibly be able to keep up with these newer guns these more tactical guns, but it does. Look, Smith & Wesson Model 10, six rounds, one hole. Probably actually the better group out of all of them um, in terms of point of impact, point of aim. And these are these old school, like non-adjustable milled in uh, sights. So point I'm making is if you can shoot a handgun, you can shoot any handgun. It's just sight picture, sight alignment, and trigger control. So don't make it more complicated than it has to be. There's nothing wrong there's nothing wrong with you having a preference, but don't let that preference convince you that you cannot shoot another gun. And if you really cannot shoot one gun as well as you shoot the other, you just have a deficiency in your fundamentals. Now, this test I'm doing here is just talk, is really just showing fundamentals. Are these guns equal in this test? Sure they are. Are they gonna be equal in other tests? Of course not. If we were doing, um, 
adding speed to the equation, draw, all that kind of stuff, it, then we'd start getting much different results, okay? And personal preference might might come into play a little bit more and even affect uh, effect, effect, effectiveness. Am I? Well, I can't talk. Your personal preferences will have an effect on the effectiveness in a combat scenario on these handguns. An example of that would be grip angle. Uh, I much prefer the 1911 grip angle of this XD to the Glock uh, Luger grip angle. Uh, I'm going to point this far more naturally than I point this. I would have a tendency when shooting quickly to shoot high on this because of the grip angle. Uh, if I'd have grown up shooting Glocks and Lugers, then I probably would have a tendency to shoot low with this one, transitioning from what my muscle memory is uh, from one grip angle to the next. And then speed, shooting double action on this, you're never going to be able to manipulate that 14-pound full-inch travel trigger as quickly as you can manipulate this two-pound quarter-inch trigger pull. So I'm not saying that these things don't make differences, that there aren't true tangible differences in the effectiveness of these firearms in certain scenarios the point i'm making is saying you cannot do this with one of them but you can with the other really isn't a deficiency in the firearm it's a deficiency in your fundamentals